Hello, I am Simfogel. So, welcome to yet another analysis video. Today we have the February 2021 data mine and we did five new simpers. So, without further ado, let's get started. I want to kick this off not with the limited seasonals nor the Pokefair scout, but with the free to play legendary simper. And uh, I am not one to overhype things, uh, I tend to keep a neutral tone, he used to give you realistic expectations for Simpers, but this guy is something else. <laughs> uh, here we have a stupid sexy Professor Sycamore and Cernias, and I believe this guy is going to shake up the meta way harder than the rest of the batch. So, I like to run you through how I perceive Sernias at first and unravel the insanity step by step. Just so you understand what the whole package means for a free to play metagame. For starters, this is a fairy type support. I don't think we had a free to play support since Torchic, which is hilarious. Sernias has phenomenal stats on every single department. Defensively, this is about as good as a 5 star Misty? Slightly less HP, but you can expect a similar performance out of Cernias. And uh, these offensive stats are not shabby. If you give this some crit support, it can chunk up fairly hard. And unlike most tanks, Cernias has an excellent speed stat. This is 30 points lower than base arena, so this is not a detriment to your move gauge. It's actually contributing, so that is a great quality. As far as moves go, first we have a Dazzling Gleam. This is just your spammy move for saying countdown. It's relatively weak AoE, uh, no additional side effect. It has a slow animation, which I appreciate, but no big reason to use it otherwise. Moonblast is a strong trigger move. It has a 30% chance of dropping a special attack by one stage, so that gives Cernias a very positive matchup against special foes in particular. And the third move is Bonkers. It only has one use, but it comprises some excellent utility. It gives you Moogage Acceleration. It removes status conditions from the entire party, and it also adds AoE regeneration. <laughs> so, wow. Uh, first off, uh, this is excellent for Champion Stadium, in particular for the permanent field effects parameter. You use this and you get a free gauge for the entire battle. That is really good. And uh, there is a fair amount of full forces that rely on chasing you by using some spread status uh, and uh, crippling your party that way. You can just slap Cernias in there and get rid of that, so no worries there. And uh, AoE regen means a potion, and it also adds a slow animation, so that gives you even more gauge. So one use, but wow, this is going to give you a lot of mileage. And uh, Horn Lich, as if it wasn't enough, uh, Cernias also has a draining move. If you play the Giga Drain Rosa, then you kind of know the drill here. But uh, you attack, you drain some health back, so if you give this some crit, it can also restore health by itself. So when set up right, this doesn't even need potion support. It just has everything for a tank, so this on its own is already really, really good. And uh, it's lacking on defensive bobs, so you kind of want to partner this with a Skyla and whatnot. But uh, we'll, we'll get there, just give me a second. I am telling you how I am reading this unit at first. Uh, then we have a Team Shout. This is uh, Single Soul Blue, is passive, where if you get hit, you have a 50 50 shot of raising the party's attack and special attack, so some offensive self sufficiency. Uh, very handy because it's also a great tank and uh, fairy power. You get a free multiplier for Moonblast and Dazzling Gleam just because uh, you want to play this offensively. So this is finally the free to play fairy type striker we've been waiting for because before this we only had uh, Valerie and uh, Mina. So Cerny has used Murder their viability uh, by itself. So okay, just looking at this, I can tell you this is an excellent unit. It ranks amongst the best free-to-play simpers in the game, and we're not even done yet, because remember, this is a free-to-play legendary simper, so that means that it gets a free 2020 potential. 5 star 2020. So, these are your de facto stats. This is about as good as Signals of Blue at tanking pre-mega, and with the offensive buff, you have a proper fairy type and grass type of striker, all in one package. But that is not the best part. What I didn't realize at first when reading uh, Cernias was that the Sing move has an alternate side effect. This is just like Leafy Sing move, where instead of damaging the target, it raises stats instead. So you get uh, two bars of move gauge, it raises a special attack, a special defense, and a speed based on your sync level, 
well, but because this is a legendary simper, you get a free 5 out of 5. So that means that on your first thing move, you get plus 6 special defense, plus 6 special attack, and plus 6 speed on one action. There is not a single simper in this game who raises stats this efficiently. That is crazy. With one click of a move, you get max offense, max gauge, and max defenses. Hello? The only thing that Cernius doesn't do is uh, creed and defense. I am in disbelief. This is the same development team that made Chris's creed. The same dev team that made Nate. How in your right mind do you develop a gacha game and hand out an omnipotent unit like it was candy? <laughs> like, if you ask me, this should have been the Pokéverse scout because, wow, it's insane the amount of utility this thing comprises. This ranks amongst uh, supports like Signature Blue, like Sabrina, like Skyla. This invalidates such a vast majority of simpers. Like, I barely have any reason to use Lisa after this. Uh, or even Misty. <laughs> like, it's... This is incredible, dude. And you just have to give this crit support and it used to does everything it could ever want. It operates defensively, offensively. It hits by itself. There is very, very few things that Cernias cannot do. <laughs> I am in awe. <laughs> it's very rare when a unit flabbergasts me like this, but I cannot express enough use how game-changing series is for a free-to-play scene. Like, this is going to be a staple for any free-to-play strat. And we're not even done yet. This is the first legendary simper that has a sync grid, so we still have a sync grid to check out, so we might as well, dude. Okay, no need to check the lower ranks because we get the free 5-5. Five five. There is nothing revolutionary on this grid, uh, outside the fact that it lets uh, Cernius perform its tanking role with better success. First off, we have Revenge Boost 4, a la Caitlyn. This gives you a chance to raise the move gauge by 1 when you get hit, so that is handy. Uh, there is Impervious, this passive is excellent for Legendary Arena. There is a fair amount of bosses who depend on dropping your defenses to melt through your walls, and uh, Cernius doesn't care, it will always be topped off defensively and offensively if you keep this, so this is a really great passive. And uh, Healing Hand 2. This is uh, nice for stages that spam status conditions because you cannot depend on your trainer move to clear status. You only get an MPR2, so it's not reliable, and this is a better safety net in that matter. Uh, force field is useless because you maximize special defense when you sink, uh, for the entire party, by the way. <laughs> and uh, instead of sinking nodes, you get adrenaline 1 and recuperation 1. And uh, you can make arguments for either or. Recuperation 1 is handy when uh, Cernius is somewhat open to damage before sinking. Cernius always wants to hold piercing, by the way. And uh, you can patch it up when sinking, so that is great. Something I would do is something like uh, this, probably. And then I can go for the MGR on that game, but it doesn't matter because you are so fast anyway. And uh, this will be a proper tank for Legendary Arena, or you can go for Adrenaline. Adrenaline is good if you have issues getting an extra action after sinking, I call that a sniping, and uh, uh, can be neat, um, but uh, not necessarily applicable on several circumstances if you know how to snipe. Now, the rest of the grid is focused on the moves. We get Moonblast tiles, just a tiny bit, just to strengthen it. Moonblast on roll one, so you have better chances to drop a special attack, basically a coin flip every time you hit a target. That is really nice. But I focus on uh, Horn Lich, because if you are tanking with this, you want to keep yourself healthy. And uh, you get two Master Healer 1 tiles on Horn Lich. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen a 3-5 Rosa, but 3-5 Rosa with Master Healer 2 is insane. She can restore like 500 health <laughs> after a few sync bobs, and Cernius can sort of replicate the role if you give it some offensive support. So you can pretty much go either way you want with this grid. I focus more on uh, Horn Leech when outside of uh, Lander Arena. On Lander Arena, you always want Imperviews, but outside of that, Sarnias is just a crazy, crazy unit, and everybody can get it, so don't lose this opportunity. This is the type of unit I avoid using because it's so broken. <laughs> wow. This is going to change life for the better, I assure you. 
It's only fitting we check out the counterpart to Cernias now. Here we have a Pokefair flying type striker, Lysander Anibeltal. And as a striker, this guy is a little boring because uh, he deals damage and he gets a job done, <laughs> so I don't want to dwell uh, too much on that. But Lysander's gimmick is that he has a crap load of recovery. He restores so much health that he will never need potion support of any kind to make it through a match. Because you have healthy healing for your regeneration. You get recuperation 1 to restore health upon sync. You have a drain effect on your main damaging move. But, well, let's look at the specifics. Uh, Stat-wise, uh, the great HP counterbalances the poor defensive stats. Uh, you get a marginally better special attack than Alder and uh, mediocre speed. But fortunately, this partners well with Skyla for type skills, uh, as well as getting the speed that Lysander demands uh, to keep spamming Oblivion Wing, because this is a 4-bar move. Now, the damage looks good, but it's skewed by the 5-5. Five -five. Uh, this is about as strong as... Uh, unboosted Behemoth Blade, so you can expect a similar damage, but the upside is that it restores health. However, it has a handicap. It will not restore health if you are above 50% HP. This was verified by the Japanese Twitter Pokemon Masters account, so I guess this is mostly to prevent people from tanking with Lysander, because with an offensive draining tank, you could use to keep restoring health like crazy, so you could still try to tank with a 6 star EX Lysander with the better defenses and an effective um, 450 HP with accounting the handicap, but, well, that's a meme and I wouldn't personally recommend it. This guy can still off tank and uh, restore health very, very nicely. Uh, Lysander is also very self sufficient, X special attack, and the trainer move raises uh, Creed by a couple of stages. The trainer move also. Uh, Charges uh, the move gauge, it uh, drops in countdown by one, it's rechargeable, which is crazy, and uh, drops the defense and special defense by one stage, so you get a bit of a downside there. And uh, the bread and butter here is actually Dark Pulse, it gives you a Dark type striker, so if you want a flying type or Dark type damage, Ivelta is called you covered. Because you also get Dark Power 5, much like Cernias, you get a free multiplier for Dark Pulse. So people are already comparing this to Houndoom, but I'd say that Ivelta is easier to use than Karen because Karen uh, needs uh, partners, uh, tech partners uh, to apply. Uh, an interference uh, to apply the status condition to buff her damage, where Ivelta use enters a match, uh, buffs quickly and uh, clicks dark pulls, and you get the free multiplier in Ailey, and it gets the job done. Like it's not as complex. Uh, but there is certainly other simpers that, that do its job because you could be using blue as well for flying type damage. It doesn't have a stray niche per se outside of healing. Mm. All right then, let's check out the grid. At 1-5 you get MGRs and MPRs, the usual. At 2-5 you get more of the same. Uh, you get an extra MGR tile for Dark Pulse and for Oblivion Wing. So compared to other 4-bar spammers, it's a little easier to get it rolling with Ivaltel. I kind of like that. And at 3-5 you get more tools. People are already comparing this to Steven and Metagross, but I think that's comparing apples to oranges because they just have different toolkits. Metagross has better sync looking potential, while uh, Iveltal has better single targeting potential. And uh, I guess just recuperation too, and the fact they flinch is why they are comparing them, but well, whatever. Uh, what I really like about Ibeltal is that it gets a couple of Dark Pulse Aggravation 1 tiles, so I am not sure this is better than Iron Head Aggravation 1, but having the couple rerolls is uh, more reliable in a way. Uh, because there's been some changes to how reroll abilities work in the game, so I don't know exactly this better, but whatever, you get chances to flinch and it can neutralize and legendary arena bosses or give you some uh, utility to control this, the turn order, so that is great, I really like that. And uh, Sharp Entry 1, I also like it because uh, Gives you plus one crit. This is really good for hyper offensive champion stadium strategies because your trainer move raises crit by a couple of stages. So with sharp entry, it means that you have max critical hit rate by using your trainer move once, and that can be crucial on ending uh, battle on time on champion stadium if you are playing for 1500 points and you're going for offensive parameters, for example. So that extra move you can launch can be the difference between life and death. And uh, you also get Rejuvenate 6 uh, to recharge the move gauge. Uh, this is run the meal for 4-bar uh, uh, strikers. And uh, some weird passives derived from your health. Uh, healthy buffer 5. This is, works like multi-scale in the main games, where if you are a max health, then uh, it uh, 
uh, drops uh, damage. I'm not sure exactly how this works, but whatever, it's okay, I guess. And start reboot 4, it resets the stat drops if you're on uh, critical health. And you also get a couple of multipliers. Harry too, I don't really like using flinch as a multiplier. It's somewhat inconsistent unless you are a machine gun in an enemy. And uh, HP advantage too. This is bad bait. <laughs> it's a really weak multiplier. You just go for Oblivion Wing tiles. And uh, really, that's all, uh, all I can say for Ibelta. It's good if you are looking for flying or dark type damage, you will get the job done. Uh, otherwise, though, kind of boring. Not bad. Boring is not bad. Why must Valentine's have to hunt me on my gacha games? <laughs> Here we have a Serena and Winsicott, a very taxing pair. Uh, you will notice a bit of a trend on this batch uh, where DNA is desperately trying to fix uh, the Barren fairy type scene, which I appreciate. Either way, uh, Winsicott is gimmick, I want to say, is a speed control? Question mark? You get a stun spore with a gold parallel 9, so full paralysis on the enemy team. I guess AoE status is just Serena's thing now. And you also get a cotton spore. This is a minus 2 speed to the enemy team, all of them, and uh, you also get Sugar Rush, this raises uh, your party's speed by a couple of stages, it gives you plus one special attack, and it also gives you free move next. That's uh, any sting where he gets a uh, sync freebie and entry freebie, so this is really good for maintaining your gauge and for controlling the enemy gauge. Now, that would be an okay gimmick if uh, controlling enemy gauge wasn't useless, <laughs> because in this game, Enemies stack so much speed anyway that lowering them to minus 6 speed is not going to do anything to prevent them from performing more actions. This is mostly useful to um, isolate a target, like for example on Champion Stadium, if you drop the center is speed to minus 6 and kill the sides, then then you can start machine gunning the enemy and launch several attacks before they get one of their own. But that is such a seldom useful circumstance. Now, uh, this is really handy for buffing multipliers though. You can buff a Hunter's Instinct and Cakewalk. So that is uh, really, really nice uh, because it's fast. Uh, compared to Electrowave and compared to Bulldoze, you get minus two speed for the entire enemy team. So it's um, far more efficient at getting those multipliers. Now, the problem here is that Yes, it's efficient utility. You get uh, fast speed drops and uh, fast uh, paralysis, but it's not that handy. Like, if I want to paralyze targets, I can still use Kalim, you know, and if I want to drop a speed, there is Clay, uh, there is Brock, uh, there is uh, Clement for more accessible units. So this is not a necessarily unique gimmick. Now, what I like about uh, Serena is that she's a very competent fairy type striker. If you give this some support from Lyra, from Sabrina, uh, you get a really chunky special attack, you get Moonblast, a strong 3 bar move, and you get plenty of multipliers for Moonblast. You can apply Hunter's Instinct very fast, and uh, you also get Ramin Speed, which you buff yourself as very quickly. So I think uh, Whimsical, if you're not using it for the Cakewalk memes and uh, to enhance uh, Karen, for example, you can still apply it offensively, and I think there is some value in there. As far as the grid goes, at 1.5, it's the standard, you get MGRs and MPRs, although there is Dongless, and this is an appreciable passive for full forces that love to spam this courage, that can be handy there. But if you're pulling for Serena and you want her to be good, I think you want to go for a 2.5 grid, because you get a crucial tile on this sync level, you get Inertia. And if Koga is proof of anything, is that if you have an innate sync multiplier and you can enhance it with something on your grid, you can effortlessly sync nook for 11k damage. This is easy fairy type damage. Also, I probably forgot to mention this, but the sync raises in power when the target is paralyzed, so you can apply your own uh, asteroid easily. Uh, the 2-5 you also get Stunus Power Troublemaker 1. Stunus Power has 90% accuracy and this uh, theoretically raises it to 100%, so you can make it reliable. And uh, you also get some sun utility, no multipliers though, so no big reason to focus on that when you can generate enough speed anyway, so speed sun entry is kind of overkill. Speed entry 1 is really expensive for the fact that it's only a plus 1 buff, so not useful. And at 3-5, uh, uh, Serena goes overkill, you get the sinking tiles, like if you want to sink nook with Serena, you go for inertia and sinking tiles, please, yeah, the damage will not disappoint. 
And you get Moonblast on Hinder. This is useless because if you are using Serena offensively, you want to give her crit support and crits uh, bypass light screen and reflect anyway. On Hinder, cannot bypass critical shield. And our power is an interesting multiplier for the fact that you cannot drop a special attack easily yourself. So it's really expensive and hard to do. This can pair well with, I don't know, Viola. But, uh, or maybe it's some other special attack dropper like Lieutenant Surge. But you can raise your own multipliers very easily. Ramming speed and hunter resistant with Colonus Power is already very efficient. So. Uh, I think this is skippable when you have a Paralysis Energy 5. Like, this is way easier to use an Overpower, so we just mostly ignore that. And uh, outside of that, there is not a whole lot to look at here. A Healing Song 1 is good synergy for Lyra, Tincombs, so for Solar Eyes. And uh, the proportion, okay, <laughs> not really. <laughs> That's about it. Like I mentioned, the utility is seldom handy and it's for very specific Mimi team compositions. But you can get a very decent uh, fairy type striker out of this if you fix up the lack of offensive self sufficiency. So. It can be good. Now, this one I am really excited about. Here we have Don and Alcrimi. And outside of having an adorable outfit, Dawn is our first proper special defense debuffer. We get minus 2 special defense with direct applications. Now, the special defense reduction meta has always been an impasse because the most reliable applicator is Trifai Koga with Venoshock Mind Games 9. And uh, then there is also Erika who has honor roll tiles for Energy Ball and uh, Sinusuk Leaf who has. Uh, AoE a special defense reduction with Sundering 9, but it's still a 50 50 shot. So, if you want a special defense drop, so you always have to jump through some hoop or uh, it's unreliable and uh, it just cannot compare with Leer and Screech. While finally we have Fake Tears, and it's even better because uh, one of the only passives is that it can make it AoE. Ripple Effect 4, that's a 50% chance of making any stat drop into an AoE drop, so that is incredible. That can mean very fast special defense reduction. And defense drops are very powerful in this game. Like Giving your enemy minus 2 defense is like using X attack on your striker again, so that is typically how I fix really poor units like a Tate or Wolfric. I just slap Kukui alongside them, and with a defense reduction, they can deal proper damage. So so Dawn is uh, a unit that we use to fix other crappy units, <laughs> like having free special defense drops is so potent, especially for things like Champion Stadium where you have more isolated targets, and uh, she has more utility than that, so let's uh, check it out. Statwise, you get some really good special attack and some proper multipliers. Uh, power loading, it raises the power of your moves, the more the target is stats having lower. We have to see exactly how this functions because it may have a cap, so it may not scale that hard. But the problem here is that your only attacking move is Dazzling Gleam, and Dazzling Gleam is so weak. <laughs> even at maximum efficiency, I don't expect this to do very high damage, like not even wiping a row of enemies. So don't expect a creamy to do good damage, it will disappoint on that department, even though it could theoretically do so. It's just doesn't gleam it's just weak AoE, so that is such a shame. Either way, it gets uh, decent tanking stats, and you also get some passives on your grid uh, to tank, but I think that is no proper, like, it's probably about bait. Although with the grid you can make it work, I consider this like Bianca, where you need the heavy grid investment for this to start tanking, and uh, it cannot buff uh, defensively very quickly, which is a detriment to any tank, like you need defense buffs immediately so you can mitigate damage uh, as soon as the battle starts, and uh, that cannot happen with a creamy. would need defensive support. And uh, well, the turn move, it gets more interesting, you get uh, um, plus two attack and special attack uh, to a partner you're choosing, as well as regeneration, so that gives us more utility, which is why I think that Alcrimi works better as an off-tank, where you debuff the enemy, and then when you're done, you start uh, helping your partners, uh, healing them and whatnot. And uh, there is Charm. Charm is also really handy. This is kind of funny. Like, this is the type of moveset I would see on Whimsical and BZ, but it's on like Crimea for some reason. <laughs> anyway, um, Charm drops attack by a couple of stages and combined with Ripple Effect, that means that you can crowd control enemies very easily. This can be really crippling for people like uh, Bruno and Champion Stadium. Like, uh, they depend so much on attack buffs uh, to deal damage, and uh, Charm erases that and uh, controls them. So, yeah. 
it, uh, it debuffs the special defense, it controls uh, the enemy team, and it also gives you healing to your partners. So I think that's really handy. Team Wide Awake prevents sleep, uh, just in case there is some uh, horrifying full force that spams sleep. And uh, that's about it. The sync boosts in power the more the target is stats having lower. So I expect this to have a kappa just like Rising Tide. But it can be powerful. This thing can sync look hard. Uh, it'll give you that. But yeah. Mm. Damage wise, I don't expect much out of it. So, uh, here is the grid. At 1.5, uh, you should be used to this, <laughs> we only get MGRs and MPRs. There is also Dongles, uh, but this is not as handy as with the Whimsical, uh, because Alcrim is a lot less offensively oriented, so if it gets debuffed, uh, you kinda don't care, unless you are crazy enough <laughs> to attempt an offensive Alcrim uh, and well, you have the tools to lend that to happen. At 2.5, uh, it gets really nice, uh, you get about all the tools you could want uh, for tanking, First of four, health healing and top and up three. And uh, that's solid healing. I don't think this could make it through a master mode stage, but for a regular encounter, uh, it wouldn't have uh, major issues tanking when given some support from Skyla, for example. But um, what's interesting here is the fact that you have a dual MPRs and MGRs for every single move. And uh, that is handy for a turn move in particular because you could turn uh, Alcrimi into an offensive support and uh, also spam regeneration that way. So that could be handy to have. And uh, the fact that you have dual MGR2 for your moves means that you can spam them more easily It wouldn't uh, hog down your move gauge And uh, the max grid, you get more offensive tools But like I said, I don't think you can get much out of Alcrimi if you attempt that But hey, you do you You get uh, Dazzling Limb equal to 1 So very reminiscent of Torterra where you can buff your own crit rate if you are really lucky you also get a mind swell for dazzling gleam, and uh, that's a chance of raising your special attack. Although you can raise it yourself with your turn move, so I'm not sure why that is actually required. Impulse one is a really good passive that I could enjoy because this lowers evasiveness for the enemy team by one, and uh, sometimes minus one evasion is enough to fix things like leaf storm, and. Uh, and this can be really handy for inaccurate strikers, like for Ho in particular, he would absolutely love uh, Impose 1. And uh, there is also Revenge Wolf 3 to complement the tanking kit, and Power Posture, that's an additional multiplier, so maybe with this and all the dazzling green tiles, maybe I can see an offensive Alcrimi work. But uh, maybe I am underselling it, I don't know, it's just hard to assess these things when you don't have proper field experience, which is why speculation is bad, but you know, you guys want the videos, I shall do them. Uh, yeah, that, that's it. Like, I will probably pull for this. Uh, use for uh, AoE effect tiers. That is really good. Here we have uh, DNA is Epiphany. How do you stall for time uh, to implement the Dynamax mechanic while introducing Galar Gym leaders anyway? You use the Galar Gym leader who hates Dynamaxing. <laughs> Here we have uh, Pierce and Obstagoon. This guy is our first support Dark type simper. And uh, like other dark types, uh, this guy has a disruptive uh, sneaky role. And uh, for Obstagoon, his purpose in life is blocking damage. Now, this is somewhat unprecedented, so it's really hard for me to conceptualize exactly how this will perform in a match. But you get Obstruct, and it's a blocking move. And you also get a couple MPR tiles on your grid. So it means that you can potentially a spam it. And the closest competition to this would be Wickstrom and Aegis Slash, where they have Kingy Shield and they can also block damage, so we can kind of reference that to attempt to understand how this would work. Now, Obstruct, what this does is it forces the user into a countering posture, the user waits for damage, and when it gets hit, then it nullifies the damage, it just becomes zero, so you take zero damage. And if the move was physical, then you also drop the target's defense by a couple of stages. So that is some nice offensive utility. And uh, you can also disengage the posture by manually activating it again, but you will waste uh, the move point uh, when doing that, so I would not recommend it. You enter the obstruct and you wait for damage to happen. And uh, obstacle will be kind of sitting there until that is the case. Now, Something that happens with countering moves is that they kind of delay your battle because uh, when you use Kingy Shield with Egg Slash, you take damage and uh, when you block the damage, the enemy recuse an action immediately. So you don't have a chance to perform another action or block again with Obstruct. 
I guess this is a purposefully done just to prevent you from spamming it. But if it works just like English Shield, then yes, you are blocking damage, but it also slows down the pace of your battle. So it works if your playstyle is more defensive. And it can also work for more hyper offensive champion stadium strategies. I don't know, but the bread and butter here is Obstruct, so that's why I'm focusing so hard on this move. It's. Uh, Decent and it can be really broken when played right. Like <laughs> this, this can be really good. Now the rest of uh, obstacle is kid is um, a little questionable. The bulk is uh, fine. It's a Phoebe tier. You can block with this, but really the focus is uh, blocking damage with obstruct because this isn't really a slow scaling defensively given your own passes you kind of need help if you want to do raw tanking with this but well then again obstruct is the focus and you also get a very decent attack style but night slash is your only damaging move you get some meme multipliers grid 5 power resource 3 i mean that's the kind of meme that i would use i used to do a showcase but you can barely raise a night slash so even uh, that efficiency wouldn't do that great damage and there is also Dire Heat all plus. Uh, this salvages the kit so hard because it gives uh, the entire party immediate offense. And uh, that really helps uh, pacing with uh, any match. So I love this. This is amazing for any unit to have. And the trainer move is... Uh, I assume this means that it raises uh, your move gauge to 6 because it's plus 2 for the entire party. And uh, well, on single player, that's plus six, so that's a free recharge to the move gauge. And on co op, it would be plus two for all the party teams, but co op is there, so it doesn't matter. But most importantly, it gives you endure, and this is a rechargeable endure because you get an MPR3 on your grid. So, this is extremely important because uh, Pierce is not about the tanking raw damage more so than you know, preventing it, like you just uh, hang in there with one HP all the time, resisting damage and shielding your party and uh, obstruct to block the damage altogether. So that is an interesting way of approaching tanking, which we haven't had yet. And it can be very powerful, I think. Uh, Sigma, no side effect. And all the passes are derived from blocking. You get uh, plus one defense when you successfully block, plus one special defense when you block, and plus one attack for the party when you block. So yeah. Obstruct all the way, all the time. And because uh, Obstruct is the focus, uh, you kinda really need the 2 5 grid for Obstagoon to perform optimally. Because at 1 5, uh, you get NPRs. You get NPR 2 for uh, Obstruct, but this is not really going to carry you through the match. <laughs> like, uh, you're more than likely not proking the Obstruct uh, with this, so don't focus on that. But you get a Stalwart and Unbending, handy for Legendary Arena, as well as, you know, the. Turn move NPR, which is handy for the endure. Now, at the 2 5 grid, you get uh, ob another obstruct tile, and this is where Pierce gets really crazy with the blocking. So, you kind of really, really need the 2 5 grid for the extra obstruct roll, uh, so you can keep blocking damage. And you also get the MGR to play for that. As well as that, you can also give uh, some proper bulk uh, to Obstagoon. With these two tiles, you get plus 30 defense, and now he becomes really, really chunky defensively. And. Uh, that's about it for this sync level. At 3.5, you get the meme <laughs> uh, tiles, but don't do this unless you want to make like a showcase or something. But that, that's the kind of meme that I handle, you know? Although I don't think I will be getting 3.5 peers, but that's besides the point. Uh, Unyielding 3 also plays for Endure. It's also very good chances of happening. And uh, outrun three in case you get status conditions, but if you get hit by status, then you will receive damage when you activate obstruct anyway. So you kind of don't want to get hit by status unless um, you give uh, obstacle listen poison aid and you predict the, the status application anyway. And uh, that's really it. Uh, you get a couple more tools uh, for blocking. Uh, uh, this in level, you get block and heal. This is the only one I would go for, really. Uh, you want to go for this. Um, uh, obstruct utility. Uh, the other one is block and launch. It reduces in countdown, but it's uh, so unlikely to happen that you only want to go for the heal just in case it does happen. That would be nice. It's very unreliable though, so I'm not sure what to do with that. But yeah, it's an interesting support simper. Really hard to tell exactly how well it would do because I just haven't seen anything like it in the past. But uh, that's what makes it fun, right? And uh, if anything, it's really good for hyper-offensive champion stadium strategies where you activate all the offensive parameters. If you block the damage, then it's a lot easier to handle, you know? And for legendary arena as well, like you just keep 
constantly blocking enemy damage. That is really good for the more aggressive bosses like Rayrock. So it's a weird. <laughs> Not sure what else to say aside of that. But well, that's our final guys. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the fact that all you guys uh, support me through uh, the course of my content creation, despite the fact that I don't really plan on monetizing my content ever. But you know, we all do this for fun. I like this game, so we'll keep at it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.